Assalamu alaikum dear students. My name is Jinnya Mishnahullah Khan and I welcome you all in my lecture number 6 that is relating to books. Uh, in previous lectures, file, basically we will get uh, install, we will, we, will, we will read about uh, development plan and we did some kind of examples which are was I think so much interesting examples. Uh, we saw those examples very uh, broadly, okay, and we explain each and every components of those examples, okay. Um, after that, the next topic is our book. Okay, this was also a very interesting topic after a development. Okay, sometime as I mentioned you in my previous uh, lecture file at the end that sometime it happened that when you are designing your development plan so you have to at the last you have to accommodate that development plan into the member but uh, location uh, not favor you okay in such kind of sometime situation okay like in discontinuous edges of the members means that comes like in simply supported being and delivers being and uh, and fr into friend structures basically where the member is discontinued in a column right okay so in those areas your development length which you will calculate it right in the previous example that was seven feet but that length to accommodate that length you have a very little bit uh, space you can't accommodate okay uh, for example if I draw simple example and I want to uh, understand you people okay so let's see for example uh, I have a beam okay or I have a frame structure let's see I have a frame structure these are their columns okay these are their columns and uh, These are the columns, okay. And this is a beam, you know. This is a beam which is going inside the, these columns, okay. Mm, this is a beam, okay. Now, sometime it happened that you are going to design the steel for this beam. There is your negative reinforcement, okay, and there is no positive. So this reinforcement goes inside to these columns and beams and comes here. Okay. So whenever this is your negative sleep, okay, and this is also your negative sleep. So what will happen right here and th this is the discontinued each of this beam, okay? And this is the discontinued each of this beam. So this is the continuous edge. So you don't face the problem which I will mention you at this continuous stage. The problem which I am explaining you, you will face most of time at this discontinuous stage. Because here you need, you know, we will explain this in more detail when we, when we are dealing with uh, cut up and bent up points, you know, cut up bars, you know. So in that topic, I will also explain you a little bit further but here you here you have a maximum negative moment okay and you are intending to uh, to tag that moment to this negative steel okay so if you are interesting that uh, to tag that moment to this steel you have to provide sufficient development length to this bar either to the right and either to the left okay you have to provide so this side you have no problem because you have space but when you come toward this this side that is left side you have space problem okay you can't accommodate this steel bar in this column because this column size is hardly up to 18 inches round about okay, 18 inches and you calculate your 
development land, let's say, that comes out to be 50 or 5 feet or 4 feet or 3 feet. So you can't accommodate your 3 feet development land in this inch column. So in such a situation, we, we make the arrangement up for we provide hook to the steel, okay. We provide hook to the steel, okay. So this kind of arrangement which we provide, this hook may be at right angle and it may be one at a degree. So this is called basically hook. Okay, this is provided at discontinuation. Simple. Uh, same is the case for simply supported beam also. In simply supported beam we also provide hooks okay, to the steel clear and similarly for uh, cantilever beam also okay cantilever beam also we provides hooks to the steel okay both at free end and at fixed end okay so because this this is discontinuous edge this is also discontinuous edge so a, the hooks are very very important in such a situation although hooks don't increase the strength of steel up to start, but not efficiently increase, okay. But it, it play a little bit of role, okay, in, uh, in providing the development plan, okay. So let's see, we will discuss it in detail. Hooks with sufficient space, as I already mentioned you, this is MC Cormac book, when sufficient space is not available to anchor tension bars remember hooks didn't work in compression okay it should be remembered hooks basically do not work in compression uh, they don't play a role in compression if you are providing hooks into columns so that is useless okay they don't give you the, that advantage okay you have to provide uh, basically you have to provide hooks tension members okay uh, dim strand okay this means when sufficient space is not available to anchor tension bars by running dim strand like it like like uh, the example which I will clear you okay there is not there is no space available that you will place the bar in strand position because you have you will end there okay so you the space is available to you is only this 18 inch okay. after that you can't go straight okay so you have not straight portion available some kind of situation they require development lens and you need a development lens you need a development lens okay that is i assume that that, that is five feet as in previous example we did seven feet so, as described in sections of hooks may be used. So, in that situation, the solution is hooks. Hooks are considered ineffective for compression for development and purposes. Okay. This is the example. This is the example. Basically, one each is defined key. Basically, one each is could define key. Ke hooks jo hai basically compression members may come nahi karta. Okay, agar aap Development length purposes ke liye compression members mein aap hooks ko design karte hai, you are useless. Okay, you, that can't work. Compression member mein hooks kaam nahi karta. Okay, you have to provide them uh, tension members like uh, aapke jo beams hoote hai, aapke jo beams uh, uh, jo basically were one of the greatest example. So, hooks us mein kaam karta hai. Thik hai? Uh, aam taur par hooks ko hai. Okay. So, you must know that we have some kind of standard hooks. Okay. So, this is the MC Carnet book. Let's see what uh, Nelson says. Okay. So, Nelson basically, they, they also starts in the event that the desired tensile stress in a bar cannot be developed by barn down along the length of the bar alone it is necessary to provide special anchorage at the ends of the bar 
usually by means of an anti-degree or 180 degree of our headed parts. Okay. So this was the same thing which I mentioned. Whenever there are restriction, side rest uh, space restriction, you not you have no uh, space available in which you will provide your straight bars. So in that and you need your full tensile strength. So in that situation you have to provide books. Yeah. So this thing I will mention you. Uh, okay. Uh, in McGregor, what they say, uh, hooks are used to provide additional anchorage when there is insufficient straight line available to develop the bar. Unless otherwise specified, the so-called standard hooks described are used. Uh, I should remember that we are we have two standard you can say which is uh, which is um, whose dimensions and whose specifications given by ACI. Okay, so one is 90 degree standard hook and the other is 180 degree standard hook. So we have basically these two standard hooks. The, this is the this is the 90 degree hook and this is the 180 degree hook. It uh, you can say that in the plane of the hook it bends at a 90 degree and in the plane of the hook it bends at 180 degree back okay so what are the specification of these hooks remember you must remember that hook has a uh, development plane and that development plane is almost counted from the critical phase what is the critical phase remember in all type of beams, in all type of members, there is a critical space. And if you people did the shear practices, okay, whenever you are calculating shear, so where there you will consider a critical section, okay. So in beam, for example, this is your column and this is your beam, okay, which is inserted with this column. So the phase. This phase, this phase of the column is considered to be the critical section. Okay. This is considered to be critical section. Okay. So, if you insert a steel from the beam to this column, so you will insert it with a straight distance and then you bend it. Okay. So, up to the Face up to the outer face of this bar, okay, to the critical section, okay, this length is considered to be in the inch. development length for hook. This is considered to be development length for hook. And remember, this thread portion is basically called uh, lead lead distance. Okay, this is this is called to be the lead distance and this portion this bend up portion after the bend is is called to be the lead other so this is lead distance and this is uh, sorry this is this is lead distance and uh, sorry sorry this is stair distance sorry this is stair distance this is stair distance and remember you have to remember something which is I think if you are clear on those things the calculation of books will be most easy for you okay will be more easy for you because there is the side cover top or bottom cover and tail cover or extension cover so the hooks are basically designed on those cover criteria okay and the hook length also depends upon the diameter of the bar Okay, so what are side cover? What are tail cover? If I draw the mm, the plane of this section, if I draw the plane of section, uh, top view of this joint, so I have a column. Okay, that is the top view of column. Okay, this column has some sort of bars. Okay their corners whatever the position they will be but this is and if I assume that this beam is 
clash with the edges of this column okay so this is like this sometime it may start from this point go and then back to this point okay so we will keep some offset here okay this kind of arrangement will also be occurred when the dimension in the breadth of the column is more than the breadth of the beam like this case this case may also occur okay so here we keep some offset okay for example if it is uh, you will see an example okay this is 24 inches and the width of the beam is uh, like 10 inches okay so in this situation you have a 6 inch here this offset is 6 inch and this offset is 6 inch so you must know this differences okay so here the beam is flush with the this means that if it is 12 inch beam column so the width of the beam will also be 12 inches okay you must note this difference so now the bars of the beams will enter into the column okay will enter into the column okay like this and there from this point they go inside the screen you know inside the screen like they they go down okay into the column so what will be the side cover what will be the bottom cover? These uh, uh, give us some attention to this topic because this is very interesting and it is very confusing. Confusing. Okay. So you have to consider that your side cover is this. Okay. And top two. This is your side cover. Okay. This is your side cover. Yeah. This is your side cover. And what is the top and bottom cover? So your top cover is, you know, you have to come to the section. Okay. Top and bottom cover will be taken from section. So in section, from the face of this bar to the top, uh, if, it is, if it is negative reinforcement, if it is positive reinforcement, for example, the bar is provided like here. So from the face of this bar to the lower portion, that is your bottom portion. Almost top and bottom portion criteria is met only in the case when the beam is provided at the top of the column, like in this case. In this case, you know, you must remember for it. Okay. For example, if you consider this case. So here, this is the bottom cover. Okay, this is the bottom cover. But uh, if it is the beam is provided in the middle portion, so then bottom and top cover criteria is met. That don't uh, uh, keep any kind of restriction on you. Okay, but side cover criteria must be fulfilled. Okay, so you know that this is the side cover. Now there is a tail cover. What is the tail cover? Tail cover is the, the cover which is in between the outer face of this hook to the outer edge of this beam. Okay. You must, this, this, this distance is called basically. This is the extension cover or you can say tail cover. It is very, very important because we will design our hook on the basis of these cover criteria. We check what is the side cover, what is the tail cover and what is the bottom or top cover. So, and then we will select some kind of multipliers, AC multipliers like in the previous we did. Okay. So, sometime it may be 0 0.7 and sometime it may be 0 0.8. So, how we select those multipliers, you will see hook length, hook development length calculation, these multipliers. So those multipliers are selected on the basis of tail, side cover and top or bottom cover criteria. So you know, here I, I explain you, okay. So in later stages I will, uh, I don't explain these kind of things, okay. So this is your 180 degree standard hook and this is 190 degree standard hook. 
now there are some kind of specification okay specification is that that the portion which you bend that is the tail length at this tail length for standard 90 degree book is equal to 12 times our diameter of bar okay and this strap portion in 180 degree book will be equals to four times our diameter of bar or it must be equals to 2.5 uh, one important thing you must keep in mind that uh, increasing the length of this thread portion more than 20 dB or 2.5 inch is this usual this. It, it doesn't have any kind of advantages, okay? It is ineffective, okay? So you must keep this, this important thing, okay? The development length is counted, out, counted, counted from the Face the critical face of the member to the bend portion to the outside portion, not to the center, not to the inside, but to the outer side. Uh, this bend has a certain circuit and whose diameter is basically T. Clear now, there are some kind of specification number three to number eight. Now, if you were number of bar from three to eight, your diameter is 60. If it is 19 11, then diameter of bar is 8 dB. And if it is 14 80, then your diameter of bar is 10 dB. Okay. So this is these are the specification for 180 and 90. These two books are standard books which you use almost in all cases. These are 90 degree books, okay. So in that case, if you are using so let's see these are the criteria that how much we keep the straight portion, how much we keep the depth. Okay, this is 90 degree stereophone. Uh, basically, this, this is provided in uh, column, beams, columns, okay, columns, uh, in beams, okay, whenever uh, you are, uh, whenever you are placing your bars, like, for example, like in column case, it will happen that uh, if you are keeping your, this is your, okay this is your thighs you provide thighs okay so you must uh, and you you provide one bar here and one bar here okay so the inner distance between these two successive bars should not be greater than six inch if it is more than six inch then we provide what you provide an extra stereo okay you provide an extra stereo and i think so that's the round about like this so in that situation you have to provide this one. as well as whenever you are uh, bending this stirrup so it bends like 180 135 degree or one, one, one 20 degree okay or 105 degree so that bend also certain specification like like in this case this is 135 degree hook so this distance will be at Number add and smaller 6 dB. It must be equal to 6 dB. What are the specification for D? You will check out the specification. So you have C1 120 degree hole, 135 degree hole. There they are standard, okay, and there are some kind of specification for okay. So uh, you must keep these preferences. This is lead and length, okay. This is strap portion basically. Lead in length and this is tail length. Okay, and uh, this is a stress, uh, stress distribution. There is bearing stresses. Okay, and design of hook. This is the basic formula for LDH. Once it should remember, we will calculate the development length of hook. Okay, one is the development length of hook, and one is the standard development length for hook. There is, I think, so difference. Okay. Mm. This one. No. Let's see. We will. We will see it. Okay. So. Uh, Let me come to cork, MC cork. Okay, so 
So I will explain you this 90 degree or 90 degree of open. This is 180 degree, that is 90 degree of open. And these are specification for number 14 and number 18. Okay. Uh, this is the length. Okay. This is the formula which is used for the development length of a okay. LDH. Okay. What is 0 0.02 unit? Psi E unit, that is the epoxy coating factor, FY unit, DB unit, lambda and FC prime are same. Okay. LDH is the according to ACA code section that may not be less than 6 inch or LD, which should be remembered. Okay, this should be remembered. The, the development length of any bar should not be less than 12 inches, and the hook length should not be less than 6 inches or LD times of diameter of bar, whichever is better. You have to select the better one for the pound bars. Okay. Uh, psi E unit this expression equal to 1.2 for epoxy coating and uh, an epoxy coating it is 1 while for epoxy coating it will be 1.2 lambda factor 0.75 as already we did it okay. uh, for all other cases psi E and lambda are to be set equals to other than this you have to set if it is epoxy coating will be 1.2 if it is not epoxy coating zinc coating and other kind of coating must be equal to 1 okay and if it is a lightweight concrete so your lambda will be this one and if it is normal concrete or other type of concrete lambda will be 1 okay the development length will be it is measured from the critical section i already explained this one what is the critical section of the bar to the outside it must be remembered this is the outside this this is the out, this is the inside, this is the center, and this is the out. So from critical section to outside then, this is your development. Remember, this is your development. This should be keep it 12 dB and the center of that circle to, to the outer face of the bar hook at this distance should be 4 dB, 5 dB, 4 dB for number 8 to number, number 3 to number 8. And 5 dB for number 9, number 10, number 11, and this one. And this flat portion will be 4 dB or 4.5. I will explain you this thing. Okay. okay. So, this was a specification. Now, the most confusion part you can say of the hook development part is this portion. And this is a little bit tricky portion. Okay. This is a little bit tricky portion okay so it is difficult to distinguish top from bottom anyway when hooks are involved okay so for the design of hooks no distinction is made between top bars and other bars they say do not make any kind of distinguish that what will be the top bar and what will be the bottom bar as we did in development we say psi t factor this is top reinforcement and this is bottom reinforcement. But the case, uh, that case is not present here. As they do not make any kind of distinguish between top hook and bottom hook. Okay. So we have to select some kind of multipliers. You know, when you are, we, we are get LDH from the formula which you, which you used. Uh, at the last, you have to multiply this formula with uh, some ACI multipliers as well as axis steel ratio factor, which we did in uh, our development length calculation as well. But there are some certain um, ACI multipliers. Okay, what are those multipliers? Let's, let's see. So, when hooks are made with number 11. Are smaller bars okay. when hooks are made with number 11 are smaller and how side covers values normal to the plane of the hooks it should be remember what normal to the plane I, I, I mentioned you side cover what is side cover okay. at the initial stage I will mention you where and I also told you that I will not explain these kind of topics in that stage so you you must know about side cover okay so your side cover uh, should not be less than 2.5 inch. It should remember. 
if you were side cover no less than 2.5 inch if it's side cover less than 2.5 inch then this criteria don't work side cover non means greater than 2.5 inch and where the cover and the bar extension bar extension cover are which is known as tail extension tail cover i explain you at the initial stage of the uh, of the lecture this is that is the tail cover and that is the side cover okay and uh, top and bottom cover i also explain you okay so if this tail cover basically this tail cover equals to 2 and your side cover more than 2.5 inch then what you have to use a multiplier okay no for 90 degree hook for 90 degree hook tail cover hooks is not less than 2 inches is not less than 2 inches means tail cover must be more than 2 inches okay your multiplier will be 0 0.5 0 0.7 so you have to multiply 0 0.7 with this formula if your this cover criterion this means side cover this means side cover should be this means that side cover should be greater than 2.5 inch may be equals to and your tail cover must be greater than or equal to 2 inches then you have to multiply with LDH ACI multiplier that is 0 0.7 the another criteria is says ties are stirrups remember ties our stirrups have a certain role okay in hooks okay in reducing the development length of hooks whenever you are keeping uh, whenever you are providing stirrups like let's say this is your column and uh, this is your uh, for example That this is your column and this is your beam okay and you insert steel from the beam into the column and you provide stirrups there okay this hopefully so what is the purpose what is the function of this extra stirrups which you are providing right over here this stirrups provide a kind of kind Find confinement to the steel and it, re it did reduce the development length of the hook so it has a function okay. so here it says whenever you are providing hooks sometime this stirrups may be vertical this this sort of stirrups which you extend from the beam because in beam you are providing stirrups so if you exceed these stirrups into this portion so this this kind of it should be remembered that this is this is the bar okay so you provide these stirrups perpendicular to the to this bar okay so therefore this is called perpendicular stirrup sometimes we provide uh, parallel stirrups so how they can occur or how we can do it okay so let's say for example this is and that parallel this 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 kind of stirrups occur at most in 180 degree box it may, it may occur in 90 degree but may, we are providing it, it in, uh, in case of a 180 degree box. if you are providing a 90 degree box okay so sometime as you know that there are steel bars of, of column okay which are running in this area and we provide ties to that column okay. ties are designed so what we did basically this is the hook okay tail distance so we provide extra ties there okay and that ties are you know these ties are key, kept 
parallel to the bar. So this this kind of arrangement is basically called uh, what? This kind of arrangement is basically called parallel thumbs, and this kind of arrangement is called basically uh, parallel uh, perpendicular. I will show you. Let's see. Let's see. This is this is perpendicular stirrups. Okay, and this is parallel stirrups. So the distance is how much we keep the spacing of these stirrups into a column portion or any other portion. So you must remember the first stirrup to the center of this stirrup to the outside of that hook. This distance should be less than or equal to two d. And other spacing, center to center spacing, should be less than or equal to three d. Okay, this is the specification of ACI. Okay, in the development line. Within the development line, these strips must be placed uh, on the basis of these these dimensions. Okay. And if you are uh, if you are using parallel strips, then the first strip from the face of the bar, outer face of the bar to the center, that then I put the two dB, and you just only invert that specification, and you will get that. Spacing. Okay, so this this spacing these strips are providing in standard distance. So okay. this is providing in standard distance. So this kind of extra strips, what they basically did, they provide an extra confining action to the uh, hook, and it 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 increases the strength of hook. Okay, uh, the performance of hook. So you must know about this kind of uh, strips arrangement. We will do it example on. This kind of this sort of problem. Okay, so here it says when hooks made number eleven are smaller bars, you are providing bars that are less than number eleven. Okay, bars are enclosed either vertically or horizontally. If are providing vertical or horizontal stirrups, ties or stirrups along their full development. You have to provide that stirrups along the full development length of hook, and the stirrups or ties are spaced no further apart than 3 dB. I mentioned you already where dB is the diameter of the hook bar. Multiply by 0.8. This is the multiplier. This is the ACI multiplier. The situation is shown in Figure 7.14. Detailed dimensions are given for stirrups and tie hook in section. That point. okay, so you have to multiply it, the LDH by 0. Point. Clear when one 80 degree hook, okay, consisting of number 11 or smaller bars are used and closed within the ties or stirrups, less perpendicular. Okay, uh, we provide basically perpendicular stirrups to 180 degree, hook, okay, and uh, vertical or horizontal, horizontal. Uh, stirrups can be provided to 90 degree hook. Okay, so 180 degree hook you are providing in wood, but pentacle stirrups are you are providing and space no further than 3D apart along the development length of the hook. Multiply by 0 0.8. If the 90 degree hook shown in figure is replaced with a 180 degree hook, you are using 90 degree hook at instead of 1. 80 degree hook and ties are stirrups are perpendicular, not parallel. You are providing perpendicular stirrup to the 90 degree hook. The longitudinal bar being developed figure 7.14 applies to this case as well. This means that uh, basically, this paragraph is mean that the spacing criteria which you are providing to the 180 degree hook in that spacing criteria what? That the center to center spacing should not be greater than 3 dB. Same criteria applies here for 90 degree hook. That in for 90 degree hook, as well, you are providing perpendicular strips. So if you are providing perpendicular strips, the center to center distance should not be greater than 3 dB. So 180 degree strips and 90 degree strips, same criteria, same specification, should encourage our development and not be specifically. Are specially required for FY of the bars. It is permissible to multiply LDH by A is required and A is provided. That is the XT axis factor. You have to multiply this factor with LDH. 
but in certain location you don't multiply okay that in, in seismic zoning when you are designing so you don't multiply this factor with ZDH seismic zoning and uh, at uh, discontinuous edges like simply supported or free end of cantilever beams you don't multiply this factor with ZDH you should be remember kept in mind okay the danger of a concrete splitting failure is quite high if both the side cover and the top or bottom cover are small. It should be right. In the design of hook, the side and bottom or top cover have a great hole. Okay. The code therefore states that when standard hooks with this then 2.5 inch side and top or bottom cover are used at discontinuous ends. Discontinuous ends of members okay like simply supported beam free ends of cantilever beams okay the hook shall be enclosed within thighs or stirrups okay there you have to enclose the hooks ends through stirrups okay space no further than 3 db for the full development then the first tie or the spare should be kept at distance 2 db dbh i will explain you of the outside of the bed Furthermore, the modification factor 0.8 of items B and C here is shall not be applied at the gap. So this is extra criteria that you don't have to multiply 0.8 factor at this continuous edge. Okay. You, you don't need to multiply 0.8. This means that you don't need to reduce the length of hook at this continuous edges. Okay. And you have to provide Stirrups. If the longitudinal bar being developed with the hook shown in figure 7.14, mm -hmm. if the longitudinal bar being developed with the hook shown in 7.14 in this figure were at a discontinuous end of a member such as the free end of cantilever beam, the ties or stirrups shown in that figure could be required unless side and top cover both were at least 2.5 inch. Example which follows illustration. Now you will learn about these this, because this is the, the last criteria is a little bit tricky okay. Uh, you will learn about it okay. Uh, how we multiply these multiplicators okay and how we take it okay so it comes to uh, McGregor book he basically mentioned it in a better way okay this graph inshallah uh, we will explain it thoroughly okay that what